everybody. Today we're going to replace the power tubes on a Marshall DSL-40CR. Uh, amp looks about like this guy right here. So uh, I brought this amp home new uh, the other day and uh, it had a rattle actually like down in the front somewhere with the speaker and the housing or something. So I took it back, brought this one home. Uh, this one has a bad power tube. Uh, so uh, instead of swapping it out, I because I know it's it's uh, you know other than that it's it's in good shape. Instead of swapping it out, I'm going to uh, replace these power tubes. We have some uh, JJ Electronics. Um, I got this amp through Guitar Center Pro, and uh, they do here in Nashville, and those guys do a, a fantastic job, man, with the service and all that stuff up stuff and uh, I highly re recommend them. Um, the first thing we got to do in this job is uh, you got six screws on this back plate and we need to get those off so that we can get into our amplifier. Once we get back here we'll find two power tubes and we're going to want to take both of those out. Um, you'll notice on my right hand, I have a latex glove. That's because I don't want anything from my hand, like greases and stuffs. Um, oops. I don't want that to get all over my tubes. And I'm actually going to put on a fresh glove since I've just handled all this stuff that I've previously handled with hands. So I'm going to pop that out. We'll put it off to the side. I will get a fresh glove here. Um, now, if I were doing uh, anything with the power on and power running through these tubes, uh, these would not be the gloves that would be on my hands. I would have some rubber-based gloves and I would still be uh, extremely careful. Um, there's a lot of wattage uh, and electricity that runs through uh, a tube amplifier like this, and uh, it can kill you. Literally, you can die. You can have this plugged in and open it up and start messing with things and be dead the next minute. So uh, it's no joke. Be very careful when you're uh, messing with your tube amplifier. Um, if you're not a tube tech, you need to do something, you know. Now, uh, let, let, a, let a, a certified guy do it. So anyways... <clears throat> Uh, what you're looking at here, our two power tubes are right here. And uh, there's uh, the problem that I'm having is with this tube. You can hear it when I tap on it. Uh, maybe. I don't know if it'll come out, but it's got a jangly rattle from stuff in it. If I tap this one, it's solid. You can hear that rattle a little bit. This one. Definitely something funny going on there. Um, so... Get my other glove on so that I don't accidentally mishandle something because I accidentally mishandle everything. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just a guy like everybody else. Um, I'm prone to mistakes. So now these new tubes have not been out of that box though. And uh, they can certainly make their way into this amplifier nice and fresh. So this amplifier has been off for well over 15 minutes and unplugged. Um, and that's advised when you're going to do anything like this. Um, make sure that all of the, any uh, extra electricity has popped out of, you know, wherever it's hiding. I don't know all the ins and outs of this stuff. I'm not a technician. Um, this is about, you know, as far as I'll go with stuff, replacing tubes. Um, this amp is incredible in the fact that this little section right here lets, is going to let us bias this amp, these power tubes. And so when you bias the power tubes, that, that's, it has to be done whenever you put some power tubes in. And uh, but in doing so, you can kind of you can dial in uh, how how hard you want to drive your tubes. Um, but they need to be biased, you know, and balanced, and uh, you know, set to go, you know, within the proper range of biasing. Uh, which for this amp, I know I bias them to thirty five, I think milliamps or something. You'll see we have a multimeter, and I'll do it. Um, 
bias them to 35 it's kind of like in the mid to high range it's like i think the biasing for this image is like goes like 28 to 40 or some something like that i mean what that stuff all means i don't know you can look it up you got the internet um, but so what we're going to do is get these tubes out here um, so they have these little spring clamps like this and uh, simply just push them and you can start to wiggle your tube a little bit out the tube comes so uh it's good to remember you know i guess where there's going to be a, a down a hole uh, a post missing uh and that's you know what should when i look at my look at my seat here there's not really one missing they're all there so i need to make note of exactly how that was so it looks to me like my empty hole is on the bottom right easy enough and that'll get us back in yep so my empty hole is on the bottom right uh, this guy right there at uh, three or four o'clock uh, is where my empty hole is so uh, that's our one and this tube is you can hear it that's not right i don't think that's uh, i don't think that's what they call microphonic or microphonic uh, problem but uh, something is wrong with that hear that rattle so uh, I'll pull this other one out and then you can hear the difference it's just solid a little bit if you bang hard enough not like this one um, so power tubes need to be replaced in pairs so we have a matched pair um, of tubes here. So it doesn't matter which slot they go into. Um, so we will go ahead and just insert our new tubes and then we will bias them and that's the entire job. There's one. And as we said, our hole is gonna be on the uh, bottom right there. And so in goes this guy. seated nicely so you can see what i was doing there i mean you want to uh, open the clamp you know or whatever you have um however you get your your tube socket released into where you can put the tube in and then you just slowly wiggle and work that tube in uh, if you do have to squeeze on it squeeze on it like you would an egg you know like e as evenly as possible kind of because this is glass and it's fragile and it's where a lot of your sound and tone is coming from in your amp and so you don't want to you know you don't want to mess it up. You want your job to go smoothly. So, uh, again, bottom right is our space we're looking for there. So, once we're lined up, just go ahead and slide that bugger in. And I didn't even think to uh, kind of knock on these, but. Sounds pretty solid to me. So, a little patience, eventually, boom. That's worked in there as solid as can be. And so, there's our power tube. So, now what we want to do is uh, get connected to power and turn this guy on. So, what did I do with the power cord? It was right around here somewhere. And true enough, here it is. Getting us some power. We are going to turn this on and let me grab that. I don't need to fully 
with that probably, but we'll turn this guy on. Make sure we're in the standby, which we are. Then we're gonna go ahead and put it in high power mode. Here, this is on the high channel. There we go. We're turned way up. Which isn't necessary. <coughs> I'm going to grab my multimeter. So grab the multimeter. And so the difference, if we had had we we'll left that on the high power setting. Uh, what would uh, our, our readouts as we're about to bias these would be different. Um, so we can see these tubes are glowing as they should. You can't because I just put my hand over them to block the light. Maybe you can. I don't feel like turning off all those lights. You can take my word for it. So we've got a multimeter here. Uh, this little guy's the travel meter, and it's been banged up a little, so don't make fun of my ends, my connections, what do you call those, my points. Um, so we're going to turn this thing on to uh, right over here. Uh, I think that's the one. I don't know what all this stuff means, man. I'm just a regular guy, like I said. So we're going to take your leads, and you've got three options here. Uh, the black and the red are one tube, and the black and the red are another tube. So... Black goes in to that little port. I'm just set that right there so everybody can see it. That goes there, and then we'll slide that into the red one. So we can see we have a number start to come up, 28.3. So that's uh, on the low end of the biasing range for this amp. I'll go ahead and test out the other one. 26.1, again, a little bit low. Um, so those, uh, I, I, they might change a little bit as the amp warms up. Um, we might, you know, I could talk slowly and waste all your time. Um, but for the purpose of this, I can fix it later. No big deal. Um, but just as a side note, you might want to let the amp warm up a little bit longer, um, and settle into its stuff. But regardless, uh, this, these little guys can be turned either with a screwdriver or with your fingers, like I'm about to. Don't need these gloves anymore. Uh, so we're going to aim for 35. It's very touchy. And it will balance back and forth. So we got 34 and a half there. Let's go back to this one. We'll need to go back and forth like a couple of times. aiming for because as you balance one it throws the other one out of whack there's close to 35 34.6 so I scratch my nose Thirty-five on the money. So we have thirty-five and thirty-five. So you could say this amp is biased uh, outside of any uh, possible getting more warmed up and changing or something like that. But uh, you know, it's so easy on this amp to check that bias. Um, I'll check it again. You know, before I put the, I'll let it warm up for a while. I'll check it again once more before I put the cover on. Good to go. So, uh, thanks for watching. That is how you get uh, your Marshall DSL40 CR power tubes changed and biased.